Okay, question 11. So with question 11, what they're telling us here is that we're absorbing the budgeted overheads via direct labor. So you're saying, well, listen, I will assume that, sorry, 100,000 divided by 25,000. I don't know why I have the brackets there. Let me just erase that. I'm assuming that I will, that um, 100,000 pounds worth of overhead cost is being driven by 25,000 pounds of labor, which means that that's four pounds of four pounds of labor sorry four pounds of overhead being driven by one hour of labor right this is the overhead so let's look at the product it says to make this product to make one unit you need two kilograms at four pounds 70. you need five hours of direct labor so the actual direct labor itself so you need five hours at 14 pounds 60 and you also need the overhead because we're basing it on labor hours at four pounds. So let's do all of those quickly. Um, two times four pounds seventy takes us to nine pound forty. Then we have five times four, fourteen. Five times fourteen pounds sixty takes us to seventy three. And then five times four is twenty. Add those together. Nine pound forty, and you have one hundred and two pounds and and forty. That's question eleven. So let's look at question 12. Question 12, what we now see here is um, they want us to use marginal costing. So with marginal costing, you're only interested in the variable cost when trying to assess contribution. Yes. So you make, you sell 140 units. So sale 140 units at eight pounds. So really and truly your, if you like your cost of sale if you can really analyze that must be your opening inventory plus your production minus your closing inventory, right? Minus 30, because your cost of sale must also be 140, right? And this, of course, will also be at £5.60. I mean, all of them are at £5.60. £5.60, £5.60. So technically, it's 140 at £5.60. I suppose you could then say, well, you could work this out, not a problem, but it's sort of the same thing, isn't it? It's sort of saying, giving you real short, quick tips to doing the same thing. Eight minus five point five pound sixty times one hundred and forty. Technically, so this becomes two point four times one hundred and forty. Two point four times one hundred and forty takes you to three hundred and thirty-six. So I'll just give myself some space here. That takes you to three hundred and thirty-six for your contribution. Your contribution is three hundred and thirty-six. So what you then do is you need to take off, the question just wants the gross. So you then take off the monthly manufacturing fixed costs because that's still within um, what we're dealing with. If it was asking for net, so the answer here is B. If it was asking for net, then you would take off the AT to further get back down to, to C, right? So the answer here is B. So question 13. What we're dealing with here is about this business of over and under absorption. Remember I said in class that you have to think like the accountant. The accountant wants to put in, they're itchy, they don't want to wait for the period end before they accrue. So they're putting in three pounds for every direct labor hour. That's the way their brains are thinking. So it doesn't really matter. The point is we need to record what actually happens. It tells us that the budget is for 360, and it says that actual overheads are actually 360 as well. It says they are the same. So because this person is putting three pounds for every hour that happens, when 118,000 hours happen, they would have put in three times 118,000, which is 354,000. So currently your accounts would look like this. You would have the expense, and you would have the accruals. You will have 354,000 and 354,000. But we are told that the actual budget, the, the actual if overheads in the end are 360, which means that you need to put through another 6,000. So currently, you are underabsorbed. Your accounts are underabsorbed for costs. So you need to put through some more costs. So the answer here is. Um, C, because you are currently 6,000 underabsorbed and you need to put more in, right? And that's how we deal with question 13. Um, question 14. Here they're asking us to do, an, again, an absorption. We're wanting to absorb 20,000 over, um, 
well, either you use units, either you use labor hours, but it's possible to use wages to know what the um, absorption rate is per pound of wage, in effect. It's very interesting. So in effect, we need to find the totals. So we just literally are doing that. So we do um, 23 pound 50 times 10 is 235. Um, 17 pound 15 times 18 is 308 pounds and 7. And then finally, 38 pounds 20 times 23 is 878 pounds 60. And if you add all these together, 308 pounds and 7 plus 235, you get a total of 1,422.3. So of course, um, 22.3. So what we're really doing is dividing this absorption cost per total wage to find what the wage is, and what the absorbed cost is per um, pound of direct wage. And if you do that, you get 14 pounds and six. So that takes us to D, it takes us to, to D. Drop this, this batch of questions by looking at um, this uses a life form method. So it says at the beginning of the month you have 24 units. We'll just focus on the units for now. And then it says you buy some more units. So we buy some more, 10 units. Um, and I'll use a different pen color for what we let go to production. And it says you issue 20 units. So because we're using a last in first out, the 10 units that we bought will go to issue. And then 10 of the units that we had in stock will also go to issue. So that means you technically now have um, 14 units from that from that batch. Then it says you buy <clears throat> you buy another 15. So you buy another 15 units. And then you now issue um, you now issue 20 units. So the 15 you've just bought will go to issue, and you will have five. From here go to issue which means that in effect you will have nine units left in stock and the question does say that those 24 units have been bought for 18 pounds 20 a unit so 18 pounds 20 times nine units because we're interested in the value of the closing inventory so 18 pounds 20 times nine is 163 pounds and 80 and that takes us to a and that rounds up this batch of questions